Hello, everyone. I have a very special guest, and welcome to Scrubs Unzipped, unveiling healthcare's hidden passions. Today, I have with me Dr. Cassandra Coach Cass, the love coach for busy professional women, the founder of the Real Love Network, best-selling author, and the creator of the Love Deck. 60 questions to ask before choosing the one. Hi, Coach Cass. How are you? I am fabulous, Anne-Marie, and so excited to be here, sis. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to uh, have you on here because we met actually on Clubhouse when Clubhouse was popular. <laughs> It was popping. I used to fall asleep to Clubhouse. You know, Clubhouse would tuck me in at night. You know, it was a good time. Yeah, it was just like the right time to have that when we couldn't go out during the pandemic and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your story. How did you become oh, America's love doctor? So once upon a time, Emory, I was dating a guy that I thought was the one. And we traveled together and we did business together. I just knew that I knew that this was the one for me. One Christmas Eve, I got a call from a mutual friend. He said, hey, are you sitting? I said, Merry Christmas, what's up? He says, "Um, he's married. I say what? The man that I thought I was gonna marry was already married. And this put me in a really dark place. I, my heart shattered in a million pieces. I, I kept dating the wrong guy after the wrong guy after the wrong guy. I said, you know what? Something's got to give. So my defining moment came when I got maybe my 29th wedding invitation. I'm like, wait a second. Is everybody getting married? It doesn't matter the age, the stage, the weight, the race. Shoot, some people was missing teeth and they're still getting married. I was like, wait a second. I'm cute. You're cute, Amory. Why is this not working for me? And so I realized that what I had been taught with love was not getting me where I needed to go. So I decided to become a student of love. I drew a line in the sand, but I drew it behind me and decided to move forward. So I went to marriage conferences as a single woman. I interviewed couples who had been married for over 25 years, but still liked each other. You know, some grumpy married folk. Then I interviewed successful women who were successful in business and in love because I realized a part of me felt like you couldn't do the both of them at the same time. Emory, I'm Jamaican. So my mother always told me, listen, girl, study your book. But one thing I know is that me focusing in on my career was not bringing me love. So I had to shift my focus and my priorities and my environment in order to attract amazing love. And that's exactly what I did. So now I am happily married. I have a beautiful baby girl. And what I realized is that so many professional women are where I was, right? Focused on career, focused on that next level, focused on business, focused on everything else, thinking love is going to come like some magic fairy dust, which it does for some, just like businesses, right? Some people instantly make millions and others, it takes a little work to make some money. Either way, there's nothing wrong with that. So what I decided to do was create a space where I could support women in their love journey, specifically professional women, because you're goal oriented, you're driven, driven, you're, you have a calling on your life, but so often you get called on by everybody else in your family that you don't leave much space for you and much room for love that is awesome it's not awesome that you almost was in a relationship with Mary Man, but the other part was awesome how you took a negative and made it a positive and created this platform for other women to find love yeah. that is awesome so when you grew up like was there love around you when you grew up? Love around me. So my entire family on my mom's side is all the women who are independent, <laughs> throw your hands up at me, right? So all the women on my mother's side are independent women, I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-
during the summer times and things of that sort. So that's where I saw him and my stepmom and how they interacted, right? And they loved on me, lovely. But it's just like, for me, I didn't necessarily grow up in the house with my two parents, nor did I see many examples of married couples living out what relationship looked like on a day-to-day basis. So as a mother of your beautiful child, um, you wrote in your book, like you wrote that your book is dedicated to your um, daughter. Yeah. So how, what does this love network, like what does this mean to you? And is this your legacy to pass on to your daughter? Oh, beautiful. Well, I'm not going to force her to become a love coach. We've seen <laughs> how many people that has not gone well with, right? Like I'm going to start this hardware store and leave it to my son and son wants to be a ballerina, right? So it's just like, okay, so I'm not going to force Ava to become a love coach. But what I do desire is to leave a legacy where I'm able to change ripple effects in a society, right? Because what I know is that when you change a woman's life, you change the world, right? Because we impact so much from the family aspect to the way we do commerce. We're the biggest buyers of all the things. We have the buying power. We really do have the decision-making power, and we're the ones that really make the decisions in the home. So for me, Um, The work that I do through the Real Love Network is helping women to choose better because we weren't taught that growing up. How do you choose the right man for you? Essentially, what I feel is like people suffer from like a middle school mentality. So they have this sheet of paper. You kind of write down yes, no, maybe so. And you say, do you like me? And you check off yes or maybe. And now we married. What? What is that? Right? Somehow society said that if a woman dates multiple men, she's a hoe. Like, what is that, right? Like, why does society tell us that? Where did that foolishness come from? But if a man is dating multiple women, go ahead, brother, right? What what, what is that? So my invitation or my mission is to help to change the view of women and the view of women, the way that women view the world, to change their love lens on how they see the world, how they see love, how they love themselves how they choose the right kind of love. And then once they get in one wonderful relationship, how do they not mess it up? How do they really thrive and not self-sabotage? So the legacy that I'm seeking to leave is the knowledge that things can be done differently than what you've been taught growing up. That is an awesome legacy. And I can't wait because we uh, met in person at Wanted Woman Live. Yeah. And it was just like life changing. And you give like the best hug to cats. <laughs> so, so it's like different when you see someone on the internet, but when you see them in person, you just have that connection. So when you build all of these platforms and stuff like where is your source like where do you get all of this energy and all of this motivation man girl i listen i am not always motivated like putting on this eyelash that took a whole lot of motivation all right (laughs) look at this magic that i've created here for you amory so i see you did it (laughs) Girl, just hoping it doesn't fly away. So where does my motivation come from? One thing I realized is that, you know, they say, do what you love. And it's so cliche, right? Do something that you would never charge for, but you would continue to do. Before I became a love coach, I talked about love day and night, right? All the time. And then I created a lane for myself because it's like, wait a second, this is just what I should be doing right? Like this, this is it. So whether it's ministry or marketplace, this is my calling. And so for me, my motivation is like, I really feel that this is in this season, this is what God has me doing with my life is to pour into women specifically around love because we focus so much on everyone else, on our business, on the things we don't have, on not being worthy. And I, I feel that my voice has a place. Um, my story has a place. And our community has a place because I believe that the community that we have is just so precious in how we support each other. And what we create is a judgment-free zone where you could come with all of your flaws and we still love on you, right? Because we all been through something. And so 
creating this bubble, as I like to call it, has just been beautiful. Like we we go on trips, right? So we go on where? We're going to Grenada, right? Grenada. So listen, sis. So we 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 have a good time. And so far, every single experience that I've created has been drama-free, judgment-free, all fun, all uplifting, all life-changing. And for me, that just sits so well in my spirit. Yeah. Oh, that is so awesome. So what I'm hearing is like, since you found your calling, like you get like doing what you do gives you the energy to do more. Is that yes. Correct? But then also hearing from my clients, right? Because sometimes don't get it wrong. Sometimes I'm like, what? Well, do this. You know, like you get one complaint in an email. Coach Cass, you didn't send the email on time. Ah! You know, there's just some things you don't know why it affects you the way it affects you, right? It's just mm-hmm. like, man, we messed up. And and I'm learning not to take those things to heart. But this is the very reason why on like our private sessions in the Real Love Network, I'll say, okay, well, what are your wins? What's impacting you? How is this program helping to change your life? That helps to fuel me to keep going. Like last night, we did a session and one woman literally described a Hallmark date. She met a man halfway. They walked along the river. They ate macaroons, drank tea. He played the piano at the restaurant, got a standing ovation, walked her to her car, gave her a kiss and said, I'll see you next time. And they're already planning their next date. I'm like, you know what? That's exciting. Another woman sent me a text. She specifically said, Coach Cass, thank you for helping me to believe that I am a wanted woman. Thank you for helping me build my confidence and actually feeling like a wanted woman. That's specifically what she said in the text message. You know, so it's those things that help to fuel me to continue to do this. So yes, it's my calling, but sometimes you get discouraged, you know, from one thing, one post, one comment, you know, and and you see, you know, I try to guard my heart, but it's not always that simple or that easy. So it really is the clients coming back and sharing, wow, you know, that call meant something, that session meant something, that post meant something, you know, something that you were talking about triggered something for me that changed everything, you know, like all of those things really do make the difference in terms of my motivation on a day-to-day basis. That's, and I want you to, um, for the audience, they don't know what wanted woman means. Can you can you tell me what a wanted yes. what is a wanted woman? Yes. So wanted means woman achieving new triumphs every day. I believe that every woman is a wanted woman. Now it's just to figure out what do you want, sis? Amazing. And in the want in the wanted um woman live, you talked about a want the difference between a wanted woman and a waiting woman. Mm-hmm. What is the difference? Yeah. So what I find is that many women are waiting for their love lives to happen, right? They gave up on the apps. They gave up on going out. They're on their couch. They're working hard. They're like, I'm just going to bump into him somewhere, Coach Cass. And they're waiting. But what I find is so often that they're hidden. They're hidden in the layers of their home behind their to-do list, behind their families, behind everything else. And they're just waiting for someone to come along out of the millions of people in the world to just pick them out of the crowd to say, you, you are the one. And the possibilities of that happen happening are so slim. Has it happened? Yes. Have you been watching a lot of Lifetime movies? Probably, right? But If we really want something to happen in our lives, like when it comes to our degrees, did we just wait and the degree landed on our lap? If we wanted to travel somewhere, did we just wait for that flight to land in our lap? If we wanted to lose the weight, did we just wait for the pounds to just drop off? Insert goals here, right? Like, so whatever those goals are, they don't just land on our lap. We got to take it action. So with being a wanted woman, a wanted woman makes a decision, right? So she's not back and forth, wishy-washy trying to, no, no, no. Like I'm making a decision. Then listen, she sticks to that decision. Then she trusts her gut instinct. That still small voice, that God voice that's been talking to her, like, don't mess with (laughs) boo-boo. Don't mess with Ray, Tim, Jose, Shanid, whatever, right? Don't mess with him, right? There's something in you that know you shouldn't have been going down that road. Then then it's like, okay, well, 
where is the action? A wanted woman takes action. She's not just waiting around for someone to give her all the answers. And what I know, my vibe is my tribe. For most listening, I know for a fact you get annoyed when people are just waiting, right? You ask them to do something and they're just waiting for all the laid out instructions. Like, you're just not even going to try. You're just not even going to, you're not even going to take a little action here, right? Like how many of us have been annoyed with that? Or maybe you showed them, but then they're overthinking it so much that they get so stalled. And that's what happens with a waiting woman, but a wanted woman takes action. And of course, joins a community of love. And what I know is that most women are waiting with others. With, like think of the English ladies in waiting. So they're all on this bench, just here waiting, darling. We're not doing that. Over in the wanted woman, over in the real love network, we are taking action around self-love, around vetting love, around thriving in love. Amazing. And I know that you said that you help busy professional women. Does that include healthcare women as well? Oh, of course. Those are the busiest, right? Come on. <laughs> you caring for other people 24-7. If it's not at work, it's at home. It's just like, come on. In terms of healthcare professionals, I feel that the what you do is so taxing, right? And it's not like you could text throughout the day because you might be in surgery or caring for parents, pa patients, and you have to be fully present to what's going on. So my invitation is for healthcare professionals to start to look at how do I take this same great attribute that I have at work and apply it at home? So now as I decompress at home, how can I get present with the people that are important to me? And I know for some of you, like, but Coach Cass, I, I, I've been doing too much peopling all day. I just need to shut off for a bit. Like, come see me tomorrow. But how come we can give the strangers all of our goodness, but not the people closest to us all of our goodness? And that people closest to us is also ourselves, right? So from the self-care to then also attracting love, whether it be platonic, familial, or romantic, it's being able to also save a piece of that goodness for those that you want to get to know and those that you love. Yeah, because I am a respiratory therapist and I am peopling all day long. And um, sometimes when I get home after 12 hours, like, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> and that's my self-care for me. So, and while working with you, I'm in the Real Love Network, um, having that community of other busy women and they are prioritizing. So it's kind of like we're in kind of competition with each other, <laughs> like a healthy competition because we we just want to like, oh, you went out on a date? Like we all post our wins, like, okay, maybe I need to like put some extra effort and do this thing. <laughs> That part. So one thing I always tell y'all is that if you're not in action, we can't course correct. We can't coach. It's just hearsay. It's just us in our heads overthinking what might happen. So instead, when you get in action, we can say, okay, well, what didn't go well there? And I never take for granted that this or may not may or may not work out in terms of whoever anybody's seeing, right? So let's say the person that, that posted about that romantic Hallmark date, that doesn't work out. That's not a loss because she still had a great experience. So it's also reframing what is a loss and what is a win, right? Mm -hmm. For some, it's just getting on a nap. For some, it's going on a date. For some, it's being vulnerable, right? So it's really peeling back the layers of what it means to connect, find, and keep love. And I really, I really love love. And um, how can someone who is like more introverted, how can they show these connections with like friendships and like love relationships? And just like people in general, because sometimes we are so focused on like, oh, I need to get a date. I need to get a date. But we just need to be nice to everyone. And then maybe that person that's like platonic, like they know someone who they can connect this with. So how do we keep our our nice aura, nice 
people. <laughs> I think a part of being introverted is being able to replenish at home by yourself, right? So if you're not doing that, then you're empty. So when you go out, you're not as lovable or kind or wanting to connect because you haven't filled your own cup, right? So it's being able to, yes, take that nap. Yes, do that self-care. Yes, just be by yourself. But then it's to, to put on your bootstraps and remember your why. Why would you like to connect with amazing love? Why would you like to connect with amazing people? What would be the outcome that would be the bigger picture for your life? Because sometimes we're just focused on the day-to-day, -day, like, oh, this is tough talking to people. This is too much. But if we talk about the grander scope of what does my current life consist of? Work and sleep. Is that what I consider a full life? What would a full life look like for me? So as an introvert, I just want to sing karaoke with a couple of my friends once every other week. And I feel like that's a full life. But then it would be nice to connect with romantic love. But in order to connect with romantic love, I got to meet people. So what do I need to do to make me more curious about meeting people versus just thinking about my own inhibitions or fear of judgment or rejection that we all go through, right? Every single person goes through this. So instead maybe saying, you know what? I just want to be curious about a few people in a day. So not everybody, but when I go to the coffee shop, maybe I'm curious about one person. Let me find one person to be curious about just to strike up conversation at the coffee station, right? So it's just being able to practice that in baby steps of, I don't have to meet everyone, but I'd like to connect with maybe three people in my interactions today, or maybe one person in my interactions today. And I just want to know a little bit more about them. I want to work on my interview skills. I want to work on my conversation skills. So when we start to make it about up-leveling ourselves, somehow those small inhibitions quiet down just a little bit. Now we still might have a little anxiety. We st still might be nervous. I get it too. As an extreme extrovert, I still get nervous walking into a Christmas party, trying to figure out where I fit. Do I have on the right outfit? Did I wear the right shoes? Is my breath hot? Is somebody going <laughs> to judge me? Am I here too late? Did I bring the right gift? Was it not the right gift? What do I talk about? You know, so all these things still go through my mind. It doesn't go away. It's just I push through it and say, okay, well, who's one friendly face in this audience? Oh, that's a friendly face. Let me say hello. How do you know the host? Right. So you always want to tie it back to whatever you're at. Like, oh, how do you have you been to this event before? Do you know the host? How did you find out about it? Simple questions to just connect with people. I can't believe like you just made it like so simple. <laughs> oh, you just need to talk to this people. But I I can see where you're coming from. And I I do those things. Like I Find events first that I like to go, like the topic I'm interested in so that I'm not going to like anything that's boring. I go to like um, karaoke places. I go to, um, I've been to like paint, like paint and sip. So there's other things. Like I think when you find something that you enjoy, you bring the joy with you. And doing things you enjoy bring joy. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you you said that you help women with their picker, how does that work? <laughs> so when I come across most women, uh, they are absolutely frustrated because 100% of the men they've chosen before coming to me have not worked out. So they start to feel like, you know what, my picker is broken. And I'm like, you're right. Nobody's taught you how to choose the right person for you. And oftentimes what society teaches us is chemistry is the most important thing, right? You got to want to have sex with this person, jump their bones, lay them on a bare skin rug, which is not comfortable, right? So when we start to think about what we based relationships on in the past, more than likely it wasn't on anything good. So starting to get aligned with your values and your goals and your vision and understanding, is this person really compatible with me? Yes, 
chemistry and attraction is important, but it is not the only thing we should be basing our relationships and our choosing on. Another thing is, is that we settle down too quick. I am guilty of being a serial monogamist, right? So you meet somebody, you get in a relationship, you're in that relationship for a year or two or so, and then you break up with that person and you meet somebody else. Like the next person that you meet then becomes your relationship. Then you're in a relationship for however long. And then that's like the pattern of so many people. Or there's the person that's dismissed everyone, or there's the person that's like, I haven't found anybody, right? So between those three people, how do you choose the right person? One, you have to get in action. Two, you got to get clear. Three, you have to continue to sift. And four, you do not commit until you're 100% sure, right? Too often are we committed to these exclusive relationships. It's like, you still, you've been sleeping with your one eye open since y'all met. How did this person become your person, right? Like this doesn't make any sense. And I've just had too many of those hundreds of those conversations with women. So I walked them through a process of, how to recognize what they desire through creating their, what I call their love vision. And then from there, it goes into the action steps of how that plays out. Then we go into, okay, well, what are their values and how does that align and how does that show up? And how do we create the questions around that to see what this person in front of this, this candidate in front of them, uh, in front of them, um, how they would answer if they were aligned. Then we go through the love deck. So many clients have gone through the love deck and chosen their special person because those questions help them get clear that, wow, this is my person. So yeah, it's asking the right questions, it's having the right system, and then also having the right coach. Because sometimes we just listen to our girlfriends or these random shows and it's just like, okay, that's a small tidbit of the bigger picture. And sometimes when we are asking questions, it can sound it can sound like interrogation. <laughs> can. Can. So we're not doing back to back questions. It's like, oh, so this, this, and this, and then we talk about something else, and then we could come back to the next question. We're not doing. So what's your shoe size? What's your FICO score? Do you have kids? Do you own a house? Do you love Jesus? You know, it's just like it's just it's just too much. It's just it's just too much. So oftentimes. What those who buy the love deck do is that they take it out and say, hey, you want to play a game? So then it makes it a little bit more fun. Yeah. Okay. So where is the love deck available? Oh, you can get it on Amazon. So if you search Coach Cast love deck, you'll be able to find it. We are official, official two-day ship, girl. Okay. Yes. Two-day ship. So right before Christmas time, the holidays and New Year's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. So what is what are your goals for New Year for your business, for your personal life? And so I my goals. Um, so my goal is ease and grace to build a business with ease and grace, because sometimes I get into this hustle mode, hustle grind. And I realize that, yes, there might be fruits to my labor, but did I have to do all that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so right now, my goals for this new year is to build a team that's aligned so that I can do what I love, which is coach. What I find right now as a business owner is that I'm a lot in the nitty gritty where I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the email campaign. I don't want to be in the test text sequence. I don't want to be in the Facebook ad. You know, I don't want to be in that stuff. What I want to be is a coach and I want to connect to my ladies. And I want to create these experiences and host these amazing experiences from, from Grenada to beauty. Bali to South Florida and just create beauty for women who are beautiful, you know, inside and out. So for me, it's operating in ease and grace, building an amazing team, and then creating a home filled with beautiful core memories. So we are in the process of closing on a home and this is a really big deal for us. So just dreaming up the experiences that I'd like to curate in my home. Yeah. Congratulations. So excited. Okay. so excited. I'm excited for you. <laughs> that is really exciting. And that is a great goal because um, as business owners, we are like, we're kind of like the the center, like the center of everything. And sometimes we feel like if we are outside of the box, we we can't like we can't control everything. And sometimes letting go is a little difficult. 
So when you are, so were you a matchmaker as well? Yes. So I am a certified matchmaker and I quickly got out of matchmaking because here's the thing. I found the theme with matchmaking many of the times was older men who forgot to have kids now wanting you to match them with like 30 year olds. And I was just like, if it's given escort vibes. Like I just, I just, I, it didn't sit right in my spirit. And then mm-hmm. when it came to the older women that were trying to get matched, matchmaking has become quite superficial, right? So if you don't fit the stereotype of Brazilian BBLs, you know what I mean? It's just tough to match you because it becomes a, a superficial swiping type of thing in matchmaking and this and this and that. So what I realized is that women of all shapes and sizes can connect with love, but with themselves, right? So them being able to flirt with the guy across the room because you're in person and there's something different when you do that. And even online swiping, is just like a different experience than matchmaking, which, you know, starts at 25 grand for a good matchmaker. When most people pay a matchmaker and this matchmaker says, oh, you'll get three to six matches. There's still no guarantee you found your husband. Right. So then as a customer, you might be like, wait a second, where my man at? Oh, no, that guy, he had a chin hair. And then you might pick apart people because you're equating your money to what this person should be on the other end. You know, Idris Elba mixed with Hugh Jackman slash Tyler Perry. You know, what I mean, like somewhere in there with abs and no bad credit, you know, and it just becomes too superficial for me. So I refer people to matchmakers who desire matchmakers. But for me, I believe that you can really connect with real love if you're right in the right environment and in the right community, which is why I started the Real Love Network. Awesome. Can you tell me like a few, like one or two success stories from your Real Love Network community? Okay, sure. So I'll give you one in terms of just loving yourself, right? So I have a woman named Karen. Karen's about 62. And she consistently says that the Real Love Network literally is the best decision she's ever made in her life. And through our process, she started to understand that she is a wanted woman and that she doesn't have to settle. And we were on a call the other day and she's dating a guy and the guy is sweet, but the guy is not asking anything about her, right? So everything about him, nothing about her. If she was a desperate woman, or a waiting woman, she would have been like, oh, I'm just happy that somebody likes me. And too often do we do that, right? So especially when we don't fit society's standards of beauty. So like, oh, you know, just be happy you got somebody. No, no, just be happy, nothing. I could be happy by myself, okay? <laughs> I could be just fine, all right? I could, I could go adopt a puppy, all right? So we are not desperately looking for a relationship. We are looking to connect with the right one for us. So for her, it has made her do love on her own terms. So she released that man back into the atmosphere because she realized that the relationship she desires, she wants someone that's really interested in her for her. And so that's one side. On the other side is Vina. So Vina, 50 years old, twin boys, VP of HR, always on the go, started a mentorship program, doing all the things, hard to dial into her feminine side. So that's what we really worked on in the Real Love Network. And through that work, attracted an amazing man, met and married him within nine months, right? And so with her, it is still a consistent reframing of what does it mean to be feminine and soft as a driven woman, right? So we have worked through that with her into her marriage, right? So just looking at both sides, one is realizing who she is. And on the other side, it's attracting love. And both of them is what we count as a win. We don't count wins just on somebody getting a relationship because if I did that, I'd be pushing y'all into anything and we're not doing that, right? So it really is, how do you choose the right person for you? And right now, singlehood is a choice because literally you could go outside and be like, you want it? And they'd be like, yeah, you know, it just like, it just, it just is. So we are not desperate. We're not begging. We are exclusive and choosing. I believe that women choose, right? Even though they, the Bible says a man findeth a good thing, he find a wife, all that good stuff. Um, I believe that you still have to say yes. So it's your choice. 
So how do you think personal values affect relationship choices? Oh, personal values 100% affects relationship choices and they should affect relationship choices. The problem is, is when we put them to the side and don't pay attention to them and end up with someone that's anti our personal values because they're sexy or the family likes them. And then we end up in these situations that are just no good. So getting clear on our personal values and and dissecting them, because sometimes our values are based on what we've learned and not necessarily what we want. So really being able to be clear about, is this my value or does this value come from somebody else? Do I want it? Do I prune this off my tree or do I allow it to continue to grow? And then now when choosing this person, we make sure that they align um, in our choice for a mate. Mm-hmm. So are you saying like if someone doesn't match 100% to my values, then I should cut them off? Pretty much. <laughs> it's your core values, right? Core values. They could be in alignment. They don't have to operate the way that you do. But let's say that you um, value resilience, right? Being able to bounce back. And the person you get with, when something bad happens, it's a whole woe is me. And they lay out on the floor for 17 days and they just can't move. Like literally, you gonna step over, brother, be like, I'm sorry, but this just ain't gonna work, right? So really being able to get clear of those super core values are important. Yeah, you gotta get in alignment. And you really discussed this in more detail. Um, Do you have uh, events coming up I do. Oh, my goodness. So specifically around this now with Wanted Woman Live, it's a three day experience in sunny South Florida, October 4th through the 6th, where I walk you through how to attract, vet and marry the right one for you. Now, some of you might be like, well, Coach Cass, I might be in a relationship by then still come, sis, because this may or may not be it. Right. So we still need to fill our toolbox with the right tools. And, you know, Anne-Marie, you you spoke to it earlier. It's a life-changing event just to be in the community, just to be in the atmosphere. And for anyone that really desires support, I would definitely say to take our ready to date quiz on our website and then apply for the Real Love Network. Let's see, let's see where you're at and how we can help you. Awesome. Well thank you so much, Coach Cass. Is there anything else you want to leave? the audience, my Scrubs Unzip listeners? Oh, sure. So I mentioned the the quiz, but essentially it's on wantedwoman.com. You can take a free quiz to figure out, are you really ready to date? Because I get it. Sometimes you're like, "Mm -mm." sometimes you're like, maybe. Sometimes like, yeah. So which one is it? So take our quiz, figure that out. And one thing I would definitely say to your listeners right now is follow on social media. I'm at Inspire Many on Instagram and also on YouTube, right? Um, One of the things I would definitely say is for you to start looking at where is love on your priorities and what what could the world look like for you if you just bumped it up just a little bit? Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much, Coach Kaz. I can't wait to see you in October. May- no, wait. I'll see you in Grenada. Girl, that is so <laughs> amazing. We ain't got near no spots for Grenada. Grenada is done. Ain't no more spots for Grenada. <laughs> Maybe Bali, but I don't know. But yes, definitely Grenada. Bali, we got a couple spots left. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Coach Kaz. And thank you, listeners. I hope you got a lot of information that we need to prioritize love as well as our professional lives because we want to go through life with someone else. Like it's amazing to do all the work yourself, but once you have built a community and you join Coach Cass's community, you will have like a warm hug with you like all the time the warm fuzzies so thank you so much and enjoy coach cast on inspire many on instagram and also youtube thank you so much and have a great one bye